Uh, welcome back, folks, to another video. So, for today's video, it won't be a usual video, really, but uh, it'll be, uh, I don't know, like, similar-ish. Uh, yeah, whatever, let's just get started. So, uh, so yeah, so today we'll be uh, talking about uh, that time when a genetically uh, modified bacteria uh, nearly wiped out all life on Earth. Well, kind of, but I'll see later. So, let's get started. So, in the 1990s, a European biotech company decided to genetically uh, modify a bacterium that uh, broke down uh, plant matter, well, yeah, well, dead plants, uh, to make it, like, more, um, efficient or, well, useful. I don't know. So, whatever. So, um, this, uh, bacterium is, a uh, a Klebacilla planticola, I hope I pronounced right, and, uh, yeah, so, um, and, uh, this bacterium lives in the root systems of nearly all, if not all, uh, plants. So, yes. So, um, so well, how what the biotech well what the yeah, biotech engineer did is that they just uh, made a Klebsiella planticola um, break down the plant matter into alcohol, which would which then could use as fuel. And then uh, once the alcohol was removed from the the dead yeah the dead plant matter, then the the dead plant matter would be a would be a good uh, source of fertilizer. So yeah. Um, however, the engineers uh, made a uh, not good so decision by choosing a uh, Klebsiella planticola as a uh, so this bacterium is a uh, quite um, aggressive in its a uh, role of uh, breaking down plants. So the genetically uh, modified version of this bacterium was even more aggressive in breaking down plants. Uh, it was so much aggressive that instead of waiting for the plant to die, it would start to turn them into alcohol when they were still alive. There, well, thereby drowning uh, the plant in alcohol. Like, yeah, so much alcohol that it was over 10 times uh, the lethal amount of alcohol that it get to it. So, yes. And as uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, Klebsiella planticola is found in, like, the root, the root, it's, it's found in, like, nearly all uh, root systems of plants. So, it would uh, kill, like, all uh, plant life that had roots, which is uh, a lot of them. So, yes. Yes, and um, you might be asking yourself why. Um, how was uh, this uh, bacterium even um, approved? Well, it, it was approved actually. It was a uh, very close to being actually released. Yes. So well, however, so the environment, the Environmental Protection Agency was the, the ones who were responsible for um, approving of all the biotech um, materials, really. So, so yes. So they decided to test this bacterium in a sterile soil. Yes, they tested a uh, so a bacterium that was going that was used in dirt in sterile soil. Yes, obviously, this dirt is completely sterile. Yeah, I don't know what, what they named dirty after. They didn't, they didn't even mention made name it after dirt. I think it probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, yes. Well, as uh, all plant life has, well, now as a uh, as life still exists on Earth. You might be asking, hmm, well, how, how, how is this so? Well, luckily, uh, Dr. Elaine Ing, uh, Ingham, uh, managed, well, decided to test on this uh, bacterium in a more uh, realistic conditions. Yes, so, uh, so this Dr. Uh, Elaine Ingham and her team, uh, conducted an experiment, uh, so testing, uh, this, uh, yes, so, uh, Klebsiella platicola. So they made, uh, three, um, like soil samples, and then the first uh, soil sample, they uh, planted a wheat seeds with a uh, no uh, Klebsiella planticola, and then the second um, um, soil, yes, sample, well, yeah, uh, they planted uh, yeah, wheat seeds uh, with normal uh, Klebsiella uh, planticola, and and then the third uh, soil sample, they planted uh, wheat seeds uh, with uh, the genetically modified uh, Klebsiella planticola. So and then they left them for a week, and then when they came back um, after the week went by. Um, the first two uh, soil samples, the one with no clubs of Pentacola and the one with the normal clem guy clips of Pentacola, were doing fine, but the one with the genetically uh, modified clips of Pentacola was a uh, dead. So, um, yeah. So, yes, luckily they found out in time. Yes. Um, so, yeah, because obviously if they didn't, um, yeah, all plant life well, would be dead. So, yes. 
So if this uh, Bactrium was actually released, which as I said before, it was very, very close to being released, um, it would have spread all around the world within a few months, and then it would kill uh, root-based plants, I think, I don't know, uh, within a single week, thereby making all, well, plants with roots extinct, which would not be good for all life that, well, well all life that lives on, well, um, land. So, well, obviously, all herbivores would go extinct, and then uh, nearly all uh, carnivores, well, on land, would go extinct, obviously, um, maybe uh, including humans. Um, I don't know. So the only, um, obviously, uh, survive, well, unaffected uh, life would be uh, in the oceans. So, obviously. so um, the human beings could, well, yeah, we could only uh, then live on um, like fish and other aquatic uh, life, but obviously um, this would not be good. Well, obviously, probably a uh, significant portion of humanity would die in this, well, if uh, this bacteria was released, obviously, but because obviously, um, yeah. Well, even if um, all of humanity uh, managed to survive this um, event, um, it would not be good, obviously, because, uh, well, um, if, well, all of humanity relied on uh, aquatic life, um, the overfishing would occur and that would probably, uh, probably eventually lead to extinction of most aquatic life, which would then obviously kill, yeah, like human, yeah, humanity. So, yeah, this would have, yeah, luckily this uh, bacterium was not released because, yeah, it would have killed, like, well, most life on Earth, really. So, okay. <sighs> okay, so that's it for today's video. Um, uh, yeah, I'll put the source. In the description, if you wanna read more about this um scary uh, bacteria, really. So yeah. So uh, whatever. Bye. <laughs>